Welcome back to the Taiwan Outlook. I'm your host, Raymond Wu. In this segment, we will continue discussions with our you know, guest today, Mr. Jeffrey Mendish, over his experience as a leading advocate of English education in Taiwan. And uh, Jeffrey, I know you were instrumental in planning and launching the English news program that is you know, still ongoing at Formosa Television mm. in Taiwan. Would you tell us a little bit about that experience and also at the time when the program was planned and launched, why did you feel that the time was right for an English news program in Taiwan? Well, actually, I don't know that the time was right then. I think the time was right maybe 10 years before. <laughs> but, it's, but others have tried it. Others they, have tried they, it. But they were short-lived. Short-lived. Uh, I mean, I think there's been a consensus among a lot of people that Taiwan is sorely lacking in the amount of locally produced English programming that mm -hmm. they have. And, you know, there's always been all this talk about Taiwan being an international communication of hub course. and an international transportation mm -hmm. hub. But to be international, you do need a language that is as internationally, a yes. as a bridge, that's mm -hmm. an internationally uh, understood. I mean, if for no other reason, when you see you get two people in Taiwan doing business, even if they're not Taiwanese and American, you can have a Japanese and a German, they have to have a common language. And for whatever reason, for better or worse, yes. English has been, you know, yeah. the de facto international yeah, the language. Yeah, you know, means of and, communication. Um, yes. mm -hmm. FTV, Formosa News at the time, saw that there was a genuine need mm -hmm. for an English, a locally produced English language news program that talked about Taiwan issues, not just, you know, a CNN or a BBC, which are good in their own right, but, you know, something produced locally. And so okay. they came to me and said, are you interested in doing this? And of course, I thought, hey, that's a, a fantastic idea. And we kind of mm -hmm. planned out how we wanted to do it. And uh, that, that was it. We were on the air. And the response so far has been really uh, fantastic. I uh -huh. mean, a lot of people uh, rely on that as their source of English news if they're not uh, Taiwanese speakers. I mean, okay. you have tons of news in Taiwan, of but if you, if you don't understand what's <laughs> Mandarin, being said, yes, and yeah. the only comment I get, like if I go to a, some sort of a function and there's a lot of Taiwan's uh -huh. uh, Diplomatic partners are there, and the the uh, ambassadors. The yes. only comment I get is they say it's not long enough. They'd like to see a couple hours a day <laughs> yeah. of English language news, but it's well received by the expatriate foreign community, yeah, and it's no well doubt. it's yes. well received by the uh, Taiwanese community. And based on our ratings, which are quite good, mm -hmm. especially in the more urban areas, we have a fairly high viewership. Yeah. So the program so far has pretty much met your you know original expectations. I, I think so. I think mm -hmm. so. I mean, it's it's important that people are able to see uh -huh. what's happening in Taiwan as it's happening. You know, otherwise, if you want English language news, you have to wait the next day for the newspaper. Okay. Well, other than FTV's, uh, you know, English news program, other than this program, do you see other media in Taiwan, local media, that are thinking of following the same model of having more English language programs and making Taiwanese audience more in tune with what's happening around the globe? I think that's a bit of a problem because there's okay. kind of a vicious cycle, which is that uh, stations here are very focused on viewership and ratings. Yes. And that brings in the, uh, the advertising, brings in the advertising <laughs> yes. revenue. So, yes. uh, you, you know, I think it's more up to like, you know, the public television to do mm -hmm. those kind of programs. I think the regular commercial stations are a little hesitant uh, to do too much in that area because it takes away from their Taiwanese or Chinese language programming, which, uh, you know, ostensibly, bring, ostensibly brings in advertising dollars. So I know that's a problem. So I really think the government. Uh, needs to take the initiative in getting more English language programming on the air. Mm -hmm. What do you think, you know, as a foreigner living in Taiwan, what do you think that we can do as a society of making English more accessible to different generations and to different people, and also making English more part of, um, you know, our lives here, uh, not just, you know, a, a, a subject mm -hmm. in school? You know, what are the things, more creative ideas that you can offer? Well, I mean, if we look at it, unfortunately, we see that Taiwan's English language skills within Asia uh -huh. isn't ranking very high. No, and well, we could I, do a lot better. <laughs> yes. I, I think part of it has to do with the fact that everybody knows that English is important. But like you said, it's, it's a subject in school like anything else, and there's really not the incentive 
or the structure there. I, I think what needs to be done and fairly urgently is for Taiwan to do something like what they have in Singapore where English is the official second language right. of the country. Okay. Official documents are written in both uh, well, Chinese, Chinese and English. English yes. People who want to join the civil service need to show certain levels uh, of, English proficiency. Of, of English proficiency. So right. I think that would be a big step. I mean I think in some ways everybody feels like mm -hmm. English is a uh, definitely an important second language, mm -hmm. but the, they, we've never taken the step here of saying, okay, English is our official uh, second language. And of course, there, you, you know, there would be some preparation that would be needed for that and some work to implement it. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, official documents, but I think it would, that kind of a move mm -hmm. would make English in Taiwan much more accessible and it would give people much more of an incentive to say, hey, if I'm going to succeed in the future, I need to be able to be fluent not only in my native language mm -hmm. but in the globally accepted mm -hmm. uh, communication language of English. Yeah. yeah, in a fundamental sense, I really think with a you know, flat and uh, integrated you know, uh, world today that the younger generation probably needs to think more than just English. You know, of course, Mandarin is the native tongue, mm -hmm. and English may be their preferred second language. But I think having English proficiency in the years, in the uh, decades ahead, may not be enough. You know, they may need to pick up a third language, like Japanese, like French, or German, or uh, Spanish. But, um, you know, uh, Jeffrey, you've been here, you know, 20-some years, and uh, you've made the adjustment. Of course, you know, in terms of language, in mm -hmm. terms of, you know, you know, living style and things, that was no problem. But if I were, you know, a foreigner thinking of coming to Taiwan, working, living, what would be your, you know, word of advice, you know, uh, based on your experience here? You know, what needs to be prepared for my end, you know, in addition to the language, mm -hmm. you know, I got to at least be able to converse in simple Mandarin, you know, to get my way around, you mm -hmm. know, the town, things. You know, what are the other preparations that you would recommend that are needed for people thinking of coming into Taiwan? Well, I think one thing I would make note of is in some ways Taiwan is a very foreigner friendly kind of country. And the reason I say that, I'm not saying that because you know we're on a program <laughs> about Taiwan, but I, I mean yes. it very sincerely and I mean it also based, even though I've never lived say in Japan, Okay. Uh, I do have friends who have spent considerable time in Japan and in Taiwan. Okay. And from what they tell me, when you're in Japan, you would seldom be invited to the home of a Japanese person. The Japanese, according to them, have mm -hmm. a kind of a clear delineation of who is a foreigner, who, who is, is foreigner, Japanese. and who is native. Yes. And you never really experienced that in Taiwan. I, even from when I first got here, you had this ex this feeling of that you were welcomed here. Yes. And you know, maybe some people even went a little overboard in terms <laughs> of their acceptance yeah. of Westerners. But I think generally, overall, you don't have any. Kind kind of a sense here that there's a rejection of foreigners. I think people here are very receptive to that. In fact, if you look at the society now, you have, uh -huh. uh, I think out of every six children born in Taiwan now, mm -hmm. one of them is from a mixed marriage, yes. if I don't have my statistics wrong. So, yeah. I mean, you've got uh, quite a homogeneous population here in some ways. Mm -hmm. uh, Taiwan originally was a colony of Holland of uh, very early on, mm -hmm. uh, then of the Later Japanese, Japanese. Uh, yes. you know, through the early part of the 20th century. And mm -hmm. you really get the sense that it's a very forgiving and accepting yes. kind of a society. So from that yes. point of view, you don't come here in sense that you're really an outsider. Uh -huh. I, I never got that sense that, oh, you know, you're an outsider here. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you know some of the language, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's easier. It helps. Yes. It helps. And, uh, you know, other than that, I think you have to know, well, what am I coming here to do? What's my purpose for being here? But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in terms of... Uh, uh, of fitting in. Okay. Uh, certainly, I think there's enough modern, uh, you know, maybe 25, 30 years ago in Taiwan, yes. some people would have felt, well, this is a little bit of a hardship situation, but I'd say 21st century no longer, Taiwan, yes. that's, that's no longer the case. Yeah, you live in Taipei, right, Jeffrey? In Taipei, yes. Yeah. How do you think that, uh, you know, the city of Taipei, have we prepared ourselves in terms of, you know, for example, English road signs, you know, and on the metro that you know where you're going, on the bus, you know, you're, you're given English language, this, you know, instructions. Are those things you think uh, in place and making your life or adjustment a little more easy? 
I would say I would give them grades right now of say 80 to 85 percent. Well, that's I, not bad. I yeah. think. I know I think, you're a tough grader. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in terms of the MRT, the announcements, yes. uh, uh, and you know, they even have you know taxi cabs. You know, I speak English, so yes. there is general. Uh, yeah. English language friendliness here for the most part, but I think mm -hmm. it could be even better. Mm -hmm. Some of the street signs, the names are confusing because they use different ways of romanizing of the street sign names. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think overall, Taipei is a relatively uh, mm -hmm. foreign friendly uh, mm -hmm. type of a city from a language point of view. Okay. Let's talk about your experiences with people here. Mm -hmm. you know, how, you know, what's the percentage of people who's able to converse with you in English? or who's able to uh, you know, uh, understand uh, what, what you expect mm -hmm. and uh, what you want and what you want to do with things? I wish I could answer that question for you, Raymond, because I probably <laughs> speak Chinese with people more far often, more yes, than because English. Because your Chinese is very good. Yes. Right, so I, don't, I can't really say that I walk around the streets <laughs> testing people's English. That doesn't... But you know, how about people looking at you as a foreigner? Do they come up to you and try to speak with you in English and try to... Uh, you know, maybe as a, a way of improving or you know, uh, getting their English you know, across a little more effectively. I found that very early on when I was here, that used to happen sometimes. But okay. I think in the last uh, 10 years or so, 15 years, I think Taiwanese people have become more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of exposure to the outside, both mm -hmm. in terms of media and information. People here travel a lot now. Mm -hmm. So I think they have a greater sensitivity to the fact that, you know, uh, just walking up to a stranger and talking to them mm -hmm. might not always be... Uh, you know, there's something that people are comfortable doing. Yes. Yeah, right. But I, so, I think people here have become much more sophisticated. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I never have a problem speaking with somebody in English if they do have, you know, good enough, uh, okay. you know, well. uh, ability there. But I, I, I think basically there's a lot of access for people now. Okay. English-wise, you've got, you know, travel, different yeah. programs, HBO. And I think people now just have to get a little more serious yeah. about saying, hey, yeah. I really need to bring my English yeah. up to par. Jeffrey, you brought up a very good point in terms of, in addition to language, what are the other obstacles for foreigners trying to adjust, you know, trying to adapt in Taiwan? That will be the topic of our conversation when we come back. We'll see you in a little bit.